All right, guys, another hot one coming at you with our simple guide to rolling back firmware on your Mavic. Uh, this should work for every other aircraft as well. Uh, we're going to use the Dumbledore tool. Uh, big credit to the guys that made this on Slack and other areas, uh, those that really put in the work. Uh, it's a really simple process, really good success rates. You can go back to any firmware you want. On the Mavic, I'm going to go back to .700. Basically, you need to download the, uh, the Dumbledore tool uh, from... Uh, the URL shown here, uh, you also need to go get the firmware that you want to flash back to. Again, this should work for your Mavic, your P4 Pro, P4 Advanced, your Pro Inspire 2. You just got to be able to find the, uh, the firmware, guys. So go to GitHub, go to uh, Jazab's uh, repository, go to the Dumbledore. On the right over there, click that green button, corner download, click uh, download zip, or you can right click and choose save link as, and you can pick anywhere to put that file. Uh, but basically we want to click download zip and we want to save that file. I'm going to go ahead and save it to my desktop. Uh, it's about 8 megs. Go ahead and leave it there for the time being. Uh, we're going to open up another URL. We're going to go to GitHub. We're going to go to uh, Mav Proxy Users uh, location. We're going to go into that bin folder. And then you're going to see a whole bunch of different firmware files. Go ahead and find the one for your aircraft and the version that you want. It's very important you get the right one for your aircraft. Uh, if you have a P4P, do not get the regular P4. Uh, don't try to flash firmware on different aircraft. Make sure you get the right one. Uh, some dude did that and totally bricked his thing, so that sucks. Uh, so come in here, right click on that view raw blue link right there, choose save link as. Uh, if you've got the GitHub desktop application, you can use LFS as well. I highly recommend that. Most people don't, so we're just going to do the simple way here. So right-click, save as. Um, that's going to download the two files onto your desktop or wherever your downloads are. I put mine on my desktop so it's nice and easy. Uh, so that's step one. We're going to get those two files. You've got the, uh, the tool and you've got the firmware. So both those should be there and they should be on your desktop. So go ahead and open up that zip file, the uh, Double Door Master. Go ahead and extract that back to the desktop. Uh, and then go ahead and drag that uh, that firmware or that .bin file in that folder. Um, you don't have to do that. I like to do that, though. Um, next thing, uh, we're getting ready to go. So go ahead and connect your, uh, your aircraft to the computer. Go ahead and open up DJI Assistant. We're just going to verify that there's connectivity to the aircraft in this case. So again, go ahead and uh, power on the aircraft, connect it to the computer. Uh, you don't need to enter debug mode or anything in that one. Um, just go ahead and connect it to the computer. Again, we just want it to show up. We want to connect here and just make sure that uh, you know we have full connectivity to the aircraft and there's, there's no problems in that regard. Looks like Bun's taking just a minute to connect here, so uh, bear with me for a second. All right, we got USB connection. We'll go ahead and open it up here. Again, we don't want to stay in here. We just want to verify connectivity. So once you do that, go ahead and close out of Assistant. We've got a good connection with the aircraft. Um, so now we're going to go in and we're going to back up the firmware. Uh, so close DJI Assistant if you haven't, or if you haven't, that's a very important step. Uh, go into that folder and then there's a Dumbledore.exe tool. So go ahead and open that. And then on the bottom, you'll see a backup firmware button. Go ahead and click that. Now what that's going to do is it's going to take a copy of the firmware that's currently on your aircraft and it's going to copy it over. Uh, it's going to, I think, decrypt it and then re-encrypt it into a bin file. So at some point in the future, if you want to go back to whatever that firmware was that we're, um, that we're replacing, you've got a, a copy of that. Now, I, I want to call out, and I, I mentioned this a little bit later in the video, if for some reason the backup process does not work, don't proceed with loading the firmware. Uh, it means that something is probably wrong. Um, I, I, it could be connectivity, it could be a timeout, maybe the battery, <laughs> the battery is low. Um, there could be a whole lot of different things. And so if for some reason the backup fails, I, I do not recommend going forward with the, the rest of the, um, the, the firmware update. It just doesn't seem like it's a good idea. So maybe you need to reboot, maybe you need to, um, to, to tweak something, you know, get a better charge battery. Uh, there's a lot of things that could potentially affect that. Um, the tool maintains pretty good connectivity, so you really shouldn't have too many problems. Uh, the backup process should take, I don't know, anywhere from two, three, four, five minutes. Uh, it'll kind of chunk through the files. There's some files that are bigger, there's some files that are smaller. <clears throat> you can see I left the window open in the background here. Uh, it created that backup folder. Uh, as it progresses a little bit further, you can see it's got this decrypting folder, so it's done with the file copy process. Uh, it's decrypted it, and then basically it's putting it back together in that DGI underscore system.bin file. So that's the, uh, the backup that, that's there. 
Um, again, the, the guys that worked out all of this, you know, Hostel, uh, Jezab, uh, Zuki, um, uh, Binary, a lot of those guys, you know, they're really the guys that made all this happen. So, um, you know, hopefully we can just kind of help some of the masses get off of the, the most recent versions and get back to things that work, you know. Um, the .700 is really solid. It uh, doesn't have any of the, the limitations in it. Um, and it's fully compatible with uh, the Google, or sorry, not the Google, with the goggles as well. You get the, um, the active head movement and everything. So it's a pretty solid one. So, Okay, so once the backup is done, you'll see it uh, finish up decrypting, repackaging, and it'll say backup complete on the bottom down there. And so once that's done, you're, you're green lighted. So now we're going to go into flashing the firmware. Um, again, make sure your battery is over 50%. Really want it to be full. Um, don't turn off the, the aircraft at all. Um, if the backup doesn't work, then don't go forward, um, you know, and so what it's going to do then is it's going to copy over the file, it'll take two to three minutes maybe, and then it'll start the actual firmware flash process. So go ahead and uh, just make sure on the bottom it says device found on whatever COM port it is. Um, still, go ahead and click load firmware. We're going to open up that folder and then pick whatever that firmware is. Do not pick the DJI um, system then file, which is the backup we just created, but rather pick the, the, the specific one. So. Once that's done, go ahead and click the load firmware button. It'll give you a little pop-up here that'll say that the uh, the file will be copied over and it'll tell you how long. And so the progress indicator will, uh, will start to go here. Again, this first step here is the file copy. So it's taking uh, about a 100, 106 megabyte file and it's copying it from your computer over to the aircraft. Now once that file copy process is done, this tool's job is basically gonna be done. It copies the file over, it starts the install process, and then at that point, we can actually close the tool. Um, we can go over to DJI Assistant, and if we do it right, we can actually see the firmware installing within Assistant and get a, a pretty cool progress indicator. So uh, again, don't close this tool just yet. Let it finish the file copy and wait for it to give you all the appropriate notifications. We should copy over pretty, uh, pretty fast. See here we're almost done okay now it says upgrade has began please allow up to 15 minutes for installation again this is a, a pretty crucial part where um, you know the file's been copied over and now it's starting the install so on the bottom right corner of the screen down there you can see um, I, I took a video of the aircraft if you take a look at the LEDs it went from red now it flashed back to red again um, back you know it's flashing back to red uh, so that's a really good sign on the tail end of the aircraft the LED is all yellow, um, so that's pretty good. So you can kind of see what the aircraft looks like through the whole process. Um, so go ahead and close that tool now, close that other folder, go ahead and open up the assistant. Uh, we don't need debug mode or anything, uh, but go ahead and connect to your aircraft. Um, if you don't sign in, you don't have to sign in here, guys, uh, but if you don't sign in, you'll have this big window over it. You can still see the status bar, you just can't see the percentage. Um, and so I actually have another video that I made with it like that. I went ahead and I logged in, um, and I, I blocked my stuff out there so that you could actually see the percentage. So you can see here it started uh, just after login there, 12%, 13 14%, and it's, it's ramping up from, from there. So um, that's really awesome. We're, we're making really good progress. It's, you know, backed up the, the firmware, uh, and I had the .800. Actually, I, I went out on a limb for you guys. I upgraded from my .400 original, the OG 400, uh, up to .800. Yeah, a lot of guys are like, oh man, that's not cool. Yeah, but you know, I want you guys to see that this works. So I went from 400 up to 800, and now we're going back down to 700. So the cool thing about 700 is it's a really solid flight, um, you know, version. It's got some bug fixes for the camera. Uh, the gimbal seems a lot smoother. Um, 400, 500 had some issues with it, the gimbal here and there. Um, uh, 700 also has full support for Google or for the goggles, which is really cool. Um, and it's got the fixed wing mode uh, for one of the intelligent flight modes. And so it just seems like a really, really solid uh, firmware for us to be on. Uh, and so, you know, I've had no problems with it whatsoever. So it's, uh, everything's progressed along. So again, we, we've backed up successfully. Uh, we transferred the file over. Once that was done, we went ahead and we closed that Dumbledore tool. Uh, and then we went ahead and opened up the assistant. I went ahead and logged in so that you guys can see that the percentage there. Again, you don't have to log in. Uh, it'll just have kind of a big screen there in the or block in the, the middle there so you can't see the progress. But um, the bar goes the same. Uh, lower right corner down there, again, you can see the Mavic. This is actively being upgraded. Um, you'll see here that those ARM LEDs, they go from a, a red 
off red. Um, and so that, that shows you that the, the firmware is, is still going. Um, if you watch carefully a couple times, you'll see the camera move. That's the aircraft rebooting. Um, completely normal, completely normal. Uh, again, don't unplug it, don't power it off. Just make sure that the Mavic stays on the whole time. Um, it's gonna reboot a couple times. The fan's gonna come on and off a couple times. Completely normal, that's what we wanna have happen. Um, here in just a little bit, you'll see that the camera is going to um, you know, do some, some gimbal movements. Uh, again, it's part of the natural rebooting process. Um, so, you know, I wanted to match up, you know, the, the firmware update screen with, you know, what the aircraft actually looks like. Um, you know, you can kind of see there flashing on the, the countertop. We've got, you know, that, that yellow LED in the, the tail end. Um, you know, uh, my, my camera went off just a little bit off to the edge, but you can see that we've got, you know, red lights on the arms, you know, up on the, uh, the assistant, we're progressing up, we're at 99%. And so everything looks really good. Um, now, something that I do want to mention here is I've seen times in the Assistant where it does get locked down at 99%. Uh, for whatever reason, it just kind of freezes there, despite the fact that the, that the firmware is completely done. So you'll see here that it's rebooting, the, uh, the camera is working. So if you get to a point where you're frozen at 99%, um, you know, don't, don't worry there. Um, let it sit there for a good five minutes, you know, make sure it's not going to hit 100%. But what we want to do at that point is um, basically turn on the remote control, see if you can connect it. If you can connect it, then, you know, the firmware has stopped upgrading and the aircraft is in a usable state. Um, if the RC can't connect, then that means that your firmware upgrade process is still going on uh, and you want to just kind of let it go. So in my case, I was able to connect. I look over on the screen, I'm at 99%. That means the firmware update is finished. It just kind of assistant hung there at 99%. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that, that RC off. Um, and then what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna go over to the aircraft. I'm gonna power the aircraft off, probably unplug it, close the assistant, go back to the aircraft, turn it back on, plug it back in, open up DJI Assistant brand new, and basically kind of refresh things. Um, and, and I've had really good success with this, especially if it's stuck on 99%. If it's stuck anything earlier than that, let it just sit there, guys. Um, it's gonna take some time to get through it sometimes, but it'll you know, it'll be good, let it keep going. Only do this if it's 99%. Um, again, I think DJI Assistant just sometimes locks on 99% for whatever reason. So you'll see here, I powered it off, I powered it back on, uh, we've reconnected, um, going into Assistant here. Uh, you'll see that the, the firmware that I, again, that I just updated, this is just one continuous video, um, the firmware I just updated is now at the dot seven zero zero. So it'll load here, you can see uh, 1.03.700. So it's completely rolled everything back to the dot seven zero zero. Um, I don't actually bother with the remote control, to be honest. I leave it on whatever the, the newest one is. So um, again, this is uh, just a video kind of flipping back over to the screen recording. Um, you know, that was at, at 99%. So I basically just hit back. Um, on the side right now, I'm, you know, turning the Mavic on, turning it off, and then I'll come back here. Uh, I'll close the assistant. Uh, again, I turn the Mavic off, turn it back on, and then I reopen the assistant to reestablish that, that connection. Um, you don't need to bug mode on this one. Um, just go ahead and connect to it, and you should be able to see that the, the firmware has, in fact, changed to the, uh, the dot seven zero zero. So as long as uh, that shows that everything's good, um, you can go ahead and unplug it. You can go out and fly guys. Uh, or if your next step is to update and modify the, the parameters, uh, then that's, you know, the next step as well. So go ahead and uh, go back to the main screen, set your debug value to one. Uh, I've got many other videos on how to do that. Um, and then you guys should be set. So again, uh, big credit to the guys that, um, that came up with the tool that came up with the process and, you know, the abilities here. So, uh, thanks again for, for watching my videos. I appreciate it guys. You take care.